What's going on guys, John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to make sure only the correct user can edit a post for our app with Flask and Python. Okay, in the last video we made sure that only the correct user could delete a post, the person that created that post. In this video we want to make sure only that same correct user can edit a post. As it is now, anybody can click on any post and edit it, and you know, that's obviously no good. We want to make sure only the correct user can do it. So, very similar to the last post with just a couple of little twists. We need to get rid of these buttons and do some things like that. So it should be pretty easy. Okay, so let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Flask videos in this series. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't so far. So let's head over to our hello.py file and very quickly come down to the bottom. Remember in the last video, we set up this poster ID. So whoever posted a post, gets a poster ID, we associate it with the user, check all that out in the last video if you haven't seen that, last couple of videos. So now we want to make sure that only the person that created the post can edit it. So I'm going to hit control F and let's search for edit underscore post. And there it is. So here we've got a couple of things going on. We've got this if statement that says, hey, if they submit the form, do all the things. Otherwise, just render the page. So right off the bat here, we want to come here to where we're just rendering the page. If somebody wants to go to the edit page, we want to like say, hold on, only let them go to that page if they're the correct user. So at any given time, we know who the logged in current user is by calling current underscore user. And if we want their ID, we just call dot ID. So we can say, hey, if that person, the person that's logged in is equal to the post dot poster underscore ID, then we want to do something. What do you want to do? Well, we want to allow them to visit the page, right? So this post dot poster ID, we're getting that right up here at the beginning. We're querying the database based on the ID number that we're passing in. So remember, that's just, for instance, we click here. That's this three. This is post number three, right? So we're taking that and we're saying, hey, look in the database for post number three and assign it to this variable. Well, we know any post has a poster ID, right? Because way down here in the last couple of videos, we added that poster ID foreign key to our post model, right? And so we could just run a simple if statement. And if they match, then let them edit this page because that means the current user is the user that posted the post, so let them edit it. And we can do this current user ID because up here we have this login required thing. So you can only get to this page if you're logged in. So if you're logged in, you have a current user ID, right? If you're not logged in, you don't have a current user ID, but you can't even get this far because this thing right here will throw up a message that says you gotta be logged in to even view this page. We've looked at that before. So, okay, that looks good. So what if the current user ID is not the same as the poster ID? Well, we need an else statement. So what do we wanna do? Well, first we need a message. So let me just kind of slap that in there. And let's say what? you aren't authorized to edit this post. Da, da, da. And then we want to redirect them somewhere, probably back to the posts page. So that's this page right here, right? So we want to have them end up here and have a message flash up there. So to redirect them back here, we can do that. Uh, let's see, let's come up here and here's our posts thing. We'll just copy the redirection thing from it. Should work paste it in, tab everything over, and okay, that should work. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here, let me log out, log back in, make sure we're in the right place here. Password, one, two, three, go to posts, and you can see all the buttons are still there. We'll have to fix that in a second. So if we click here on John's post, we wanna edit it, sure, we can do that. If we come back here and click on Tim's post, uh oh, you aren't authorized to edit this post, and it redirects us back to this page. If we come here and then click this button, same thing, it redirects us back to this page. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. We're done. Now, uh, there's a few more things we can do. We can get rid of these buttons, for instance, on this page. So I'm logged in as John. I shouldn't even be able to see these buttons. I shouldn't be even given the chance to click a button and edit a post. So we can get rid of those. And real quick, let's make a quick change here. Move say two, just to make sure this is still working. Back. John, okay, so everything's still working. We can still edit the correct things that we're supposed to be able to edit, and that's good. So now let's get rid of these buttons real quick. So let's head over to our template files, and that's gonna be the posts page, I think. Yeah, 
That's right. So down here, we have these buttons, edit post and delete post. So let's just do a quick little if statement here. So let's say if post dot poster uh, underscore ID equals current underscore user dot ID, then do all these things. Otherwise, don't do anything. So let's end our if statement. So let's go ahead and save this head back over here. Hit reload and boom, those disappear. Now, if we log out and click on posts, they've disappeared for everybody because we're not logged in. So, okay, that looks good. Now, when we click on the actual posts themselves, we still have these buttons as well. So we need to get rid of those too. So I'm just gonna copy this thing and let's go to our post.html page and scroll down here. And here we have edit post and delete post. So it's the same thing, I can just paste this guy in. And if we wanted to be fancy, we can tab these over. <laughs> we don't have to. And we also wanna end our if like that. Okay. That looks good. So let's go ahead and save that. Head back over here, hit reload, and boom, now those disappear. So let's log back in, make sure this still works. Let's log in as Tim. Mix it up a little bit. Password one, two, three. All right, so now we're in as Tim Elder. Now you see Tim's buttons appear and John's don't. If we click this, John's buttons don't appear here either. If we click this, Tim post two, we are Tim. We can edit Tim's post. That's been updated. These buttons still exist there. That works, that looks good there. Go ahead and change this back. Submit all the things and we're good to go. So that's how you make sure only the correct user can edit a post. Like I said, in the last video, we looked at making sure only the correct user could delete a post. Same basic principle, a couple little tweaks here to get rid of these buttons, but yeah, pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.